Hey everybody, TN Artist here. Um, so I wanted to do a quick workshop today on how to use ArtRage. Um, you, know, you know, some of the different tools, some of the basic ones. I don't use every single tool that ArtRage has, um, just mainly because there's some of them I just not part of my workflow. But uh, there are a lot of common ones that I use and some that I use differently than probably a lot of other people do. But I thought it might be worth going over some different things to kind of show you how to use them, how to maybe smooth out some of your workflow, how to make your life easier, how not to be frustrated as much. So one of the first things I recommend is go up to edit, go down to keyboard shortcuts right here. Now I'm a huge fan of keyboard shortcuts. I use them all the time, like Control A to select the whole canvas, Control Z to undo stuff, uh, Control D to deselect, and so forth. So all of those commands are in here for those keyboard shortcuts. Like for example, the ones I was just mentioning right here, you have Control Z, Control Y, Control X, Control C, so forth. Um, so you have a lot of those in here that you can look at. Now, why do I recommend looking at these? Well, for one thing, it makes your life so much easier if you can get some of these down to where you can use them. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of other ones in here that you can use, you know, to not only edit stuff, but also to filter. You can set some of them, um, to be set up to do it. You can make your own and you know a lot of these things like tool commands are one of the ones I use a lot as well so like oil for oil brush, P for pencil, so forth. Um, these again make my life faster so instead of if I'm using the oil brush and the palette knife I don't have to come over here click that come back come over here click that come back so it just streamlines everything uh, and if you want to use some of those just go in here and get familiar with it you know you could take a screen capture and print it off till you get them kind of memorized and if you're familiar with Photoshop, a lot of them are similar in Photoshop. And so it's, it's just one of those things to get used to. The, some of the different ones, like in Photoshop B, is paint tube. I mean, it's a brush, and here it's paint tube. So whereas here it's the type of brush. So you're going to use an oil brush, pencil, airbrush, so forth. So, you know, get used to these, play around with them, and it will really make your life a lot simpler for uh, doing stuff, okay? So that's one of the first places I would tell you to take a look at and start messing around with. So you've got the different panels here, and I've actually, I have a couple of different monitors going on, so um, some of these are off screen, but let me kind of show you some of these different ones. So you have the different things here, like stickers. And these are just the sticker sheets, okay? So like if you click one of these, um, you can use them. You can turn the shadow off and on uh, and then just, you know, uh, use these. I don't use sticker sheets. Okay. So for me, this is kind of uh, one of those things I just don't touch. Stencils are fantastic to use. Um, you have a lot of set ones that come with it. Some are okay. Some are not, you know, they range from festive to comic to all these other ones, but I make a lot of mine to kind of speed up my workflow. So for example, my nature ones, I have a lot of tree silhouettes that I've made, and then I use those for just quickly blocking in the composition or where I want it, and then I can go back and fine tune it. I can use it to make sticks. I can use it to do waterfalls that I've made and just lay the basis for those. Um, so I, I recommend them. You do have other ones in here like rulers and stuff like that. I have some in here that I made for steampunk because it has different gears and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then there's just their stencils and then, you know, stone and rock texture. So I don't have to keep painting the same texture, but I can then layer a stencil upon a stencil and just keep making it. So stencils are great. I'm going to show you how to make these quickly here in just a minute, but I wanted to show you those are one of the best tools to use. Settings for any of your things are here, and I am going to show you how to make some of these uh, custom brushes using the uh, custom brush tool here and we'll use the brush designer so we'll go over that in a moment as well but any of these i mean like for example if you switch the oil brush you can change how much pressure how much thinner it has how much loading it has the gloss level all that so you can really play around with these and that's one of the things i recommend is really playing around with some of these so that way you can get a feel for what's doing what by the way to make my cursor bigger that you're seeing here right now i'm holding shift and moving the cursor to the right and doing it just so i can you know show you a bigger thing here with this so by playing around with this i can increase the pressure and it kind of uh, gives a different look to it a smoothness there we go you can see that a little bit better so you got that if i decrease the pressure 
gives you just a little bit of a different look. Okay, I'm going to Control Z these. Um, do a little. Um, if I increase the thinners, like let's increase the pressure all the way up and let's increase the thinners, it makes it a little bit more uh, tra <clears throat> transparent. If I kind of set it medium, you can see it just kind of uh, plays around this. So you can really do that. You can mess around with loading. So loading is the, the more I move it, uh, it has X amount of paint in it. So eventually it will start to run out, although I've still got this set fairly decent. There we go. So you can see it starts to run out. Now I just went back over this, so it picked up some paint, but you can see where it starts to run out there. So that's what loading does. Okay. So um, click on default settings, put it right back to where it was. And you have different ones there. Same thing for any of these, for the, the watercolor brush, the palette knife, all that. So then you have presets. So let me move that over here. I've got that on my other screen so I don't have it blocked up. So presets, um, I don't mess around with these a lot as far as for the palette knife and some of these. I might move it occasionally for stuff, but like, for example, if I'm using the oil brush, these are the presets that it has. So like if I want to do something really thick and, you know, kind of build up an impasto kind of thing where I'm layering color upon color and really trying to get some textures built up, I can do that. Um, then I can come in with my palette knife and pick one of the different ones. So like if I want to do a hard out smudge, I can do that. If I want to do a hard wet blender, I could do that. If I want to do frosted or do frost, I can do that. Um, frosted spots and so forth. So you can get a lot of really cool textures and interesting things just by changing these around. And again, you can play around with these settings. It's, it's right there. Um, and do stuff like that. And that does change it, change it some. I like using the base, the standards for the most part. Um, I just get used to using those. So that gives you kind of an idea of some different things that you can do. So like presets, you have the different ones here for the erasers and all that. Um, you know, so you can instant erase, you can need it erase, which is a little softer. You can soft erase. And so it's all soft. So there you go. You know, just kind of, um, you can play around with these and do it, but that's what settings are for. It gives you the tools, preset ones that you can then mess around with. Uh, some of the places that this is the most useful would be stickers because in stickers, this is where you see everything from like all these different art brushes uh, and different ones here. So art clippings and foliage and that kind of stuff. These are ones I actually added in myself. I bought a set of brushes and added those in. Some hair brushes. Uh, these are Aaron Blazes, as you can see, Aaron Blaze. Uh, I bought those from his website and then some other ones that are around and different ones to use. So, and so there's quite a few of them that come around. This is one of his Iron Blaze's water brush because you can actually import uh, Photoshop brushes and he does all his at really high resolution and I don't have my, my canvas set high resolution right now. I just, it's the default canvas that opens up. But you can see these work okay in photo, importing Photoshop brushes into, uh, Art Rage works okay. It doesn't work quite as well as it does in Photoshop because, you know, these are Photoshop brushes. And But it can give you some interesting, cool textures if you want to play around with. And that's what I was trying. I was like, eh, I want to try these out. And he had them on sale, so I think I got the whole pack for like a buck. So <laughs> I was like, well, why not? Um, so there, do I use these much? Not really. Um, some of them, like some of these water brushes, work okay. You know, like if I was going to do distant waves and stuff, it might save me a little time. But that's what I wanted to see. Would these save me time and stuff? Eh, it doesn't really, because um, I don't really use them. So they just don't work the same as they do in Photoshop. But, you know, you can play around with all these and, and get some different ideas for it and do different things like clouds and all that. So anyway, I just wanted to point out that's what this sticker brush for. That's what the settings are for here where you can really mess around with it. And... Um, kind of how to use that. So that's one of the things with it. So I'm going to control A, delete, control D to deselect. Uh, so some of the things up here in the tools section that you want to look at, there's a couple different things that you can look at for like color options is one of them. Real color blending is another thing that's actually really interesting. So let's turn that on and I'm going to, oops, actually I'm 
not going to use that brush. I meant to change, so I'm going to go oil, oil brush, and do a little bit of yellow, and let's do a little bit of purple. Okay, get that in there, and then I'm going to blend these. I'm going to actually switch my palette knife over to hard. So you can get some really nice blending here with this. Um, sometimes if you don't have real color blending on, I'm trying to see if I can get it to do it, but of course it's not doing it too much right now. You can get uh, kind of a blowout of color to where it's giving you, um, it starts to turn like this purplish, blown out, oversaturated color. If that happens, you can try turning on Real Color Blender, okay, and um, then get some different blending that works better. One of the things with that that works really well is to, like, say I was blending this, and then say I put, you know, um, a green over top, like so, and it just blended you know to where it turned like this overly vivid color if you're having that issue like let's say for example you're doing you know you're trying to make this into clouds okay and you're trying to put some highlights you know and you've got these on here and then you switch to your palette knife and I'm gonna switch to my normal one that I use which would be heavy blurred frosting and you know maybe I'm doing this, but then let's say some of my edges back here start getting all blown out. Okay, so like the color starts turning this overly saturated color. It's not doing it now because I'm trying to show you. But it, it does that on occasion where it's one of the settings. Uh, but one of the things to fix that is either go to the real color and turn on real color blending, like so. Um, so that again, it's under color options. And you can turn on real color blending. And that will usually fix it. Okay. And then you can do that. If it doesn't for some reason, like something's off in the other settings and you don't feel like spinning here forever to do it. Now see, I'm getting a little bit of that here because I'm really just holding down the mouse button and letting it over blend, okay? So I'm getting some of that burnout right here, all right? So that's the first thing. Don't sit there and over blend it. Um, just do it and get away from it. So if you're getting a blowout, then do that. Sometimes switching to real color blending fixes that. Sometimes it doesn't. So I'm just gonna hold the mouse button down see I'm not getting the blowout so again sometimes it works the opposite way sometimes it works you know just like so so if you're getting the blowout try switching that uh, setting there the other thing is is that if that's happening one of the easiest fixes in the whole wide world is to go to your layers create a new layer okay then from there add your highlight or your shadow switch to your palette and then do that then soften it out now why do that because when you add a layer you have to remember when you're adding a layer and you're working on top of it like this you're going to have it interacting as far as layering with the color underneath it but it's not going to be interacting with that one because it's on a different layer so this is almost like painting new paint on top of a dried layer um, just like if you're using oil or acrylic, you paint it, you let it dry, then you come in and paint another one. Well, if you've got the layer on top, you can then go back and do this and get it to look nice. And then once you've got it there, all you got to do is just either click right here and then do merge layer down, or there's that hotkey control alt down arrow. Okay. So we merge that down. I've got it how I want it, but I want to soften it up just a little bit more. So now I can really blend it in like so. Okay, so that's one of the easiest ways to fight the blowout of colors. If you're getting that, is first of all, don't sit there and just keep mixing, 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 because eventually you are going to blow it out. The other thing is, is just, you know, so just put it down, mix it a little bit, move on. Create a new layer, put it over top of it, mix it, then merge it down. Okay, so that'll help with that because I know somebody asked, uh, Tracy, I believe, in my Facebook group asked about it. So that's one of the things with that uh, is, is to really make sure that you 
are um, just letting not not fighting the computer program, not fighting it to do it because it's trying to blend, but you know it's it's um, it's going to have certain parameters that it works in. So anyway, clear layer. So that's the thing with that. So all of these blurred frostings and stuff, you can work with all those in the presets. And then we've got the custom brush. Custom brush comes with a lot of presets. And these presets are good. Um, there's some that I don't use because like the lumpy lichen. Um, I, you can, uh, but I don't like the shadow as much. For me, it just looks computer generated. So I don't tend to use it as much. But it does have its place where you can put it in and then soften stuff down. Um, and, and kind of go with it from there and build up layers and so forth. So you can use it and if you want to get some, I've got some really cool looking paintings that I think turned out that look really nice. Um, probably I'm going to open my drink because I'm about to cough. So there we go. Hang on two seconds. So you can get some really nice uh, textures with it. If you try, matter of fact, let me show you one. I think I've got. Let me kill some of these screens real quick. I want to show you one. This painting, so as you can see right here, um, is one that I did. So let me try and give you a better, clearer view of it. There we go. So you can see where I built up the texture here by using some of those paints, like the thicker oil paints and going into it. I did use some stencils from the that I made from watercolor, I mean from uh, of waterfalls and stuff. And then I made some stencils from rocks so that I could just layer it. And that's one of the cool things about stencils is that you can just layer them over top of each other and really get that, um, that cool look. So that's how that works. And that's where some of those different uh, brushes work for the custom brush. Let me reset this a little bit for you. So hopefully that wasn't too chaotic. All right. So if you want to start making some of your, some custom brushes, here's what I recommend to do. Start with some of the ones they already have in here. Okay. Uh, play around with these, like these, this curly brush or this curls that we have here. Okay. Now I had this one and it's okay. But then I took and played around and changed it. So if you go to the custom brush, you go to settings, you go to brush designer. Okay. You get this where you can say, okay, this is the head that I want to work from. I can click here and select from collection and get my, um, shapes and get my different, uh, textures that I want and so forth and really play around with it. So like, let's say for example, I want to do this one. Okay. And then I can change the opacity. I can change the jitter. So anyway, instead of this is one of those things, just play around in here. That's the way you're going to get the best results is just play around here. But let me show you where I did that. So this is one that I made same curly brush, but then I put this spattered grain texture here that I made. And that's just a simple black and white 500 by 500 pixel image that I made, saved, and then I loaded it in as grain. But by using that, it breaks up those curls and gives me a really nice um, brush that I can use to make a bush, you know? And so it gives me that really good basis for the bushes and stuff. So take these over here Click your brush designer, play around with like the jitter, which is what moves it back around different areas, play around with opacity, play, just play around. But here's one of the cool things too. I like about this is that you can also click this button right here, eraser mode. And so you can use it to erase out different things. So I will a lot of times build up, uh, bushes and stuff like that. I'll come back in and erase them back so that some of the background shows through and just kind of make it a little bit more random. And so you can do that and you can get some really cool textures and stuff like that. So anyway, the point is, is that you have the brush designer here. You can play around with, um, you have the different things for smoothing and all that. Smoothing is probably easier to show you under the pen tools. Let me switch here again. You have a lot of different ones here. So like, uh, 
round and smooth, which actually I have it set in the settings to be a square head brush. So it's not round and smooth, it's kind of angular and smooth. Okay, see how it just smoothed itself out? That's because the smoothing is up. If I turn that down, it just barely, it just kind of barely does it. If I turn it way up, boop, see it almost completely smooths it out. So if you have kind of a jittery hand and you can't make a real smooth line, that's what that's for. Okay. Smoothing will smooth it out. Um, so, all right, see how I'm using my mouse right now because it gives me a jitt more jittery line. But then when I let go of the button, it gives me that smoother. So if I want to switch to my pen I, and say I'm trying to, um, you know, maybe ink something like I have a, a pencil, I'm sorry, I have a pencil drawing that I'm working on and I want to ink it, then I can use my pen to get some really nice smooth lines. Um, I can play around with the different things. Now this is, you know, this can be annoying if you're trying to do something and it's overly smoothing it. Like say you're trying to do, you know, fish scales or something and, and it's uh, overly smoothing it. It can be rather annoying for that. Uh, technical pen gives you a much nicer drawing line. So if you're wanting to do some basic hatching and that kind of stuff, you can do that. Smooth the transparent ink is a great way. This is almost like a Coptic marker to build it up. Speaking of marker, if you jump over to the marker, you can play around and get some really interesting effects and blending. with it and then you can really um, so like if you're trying to blend out some trees or you're trying to blend out some uh, scales or something or you want to have a good gradation this works great for if you're doing paintings of like skin and stuff I have a nose and ear tutorial on YouTube and I use the marker tool in that a lot and it really gives you that nice gradation like so. So these are almost like using Coptic markers, but you can do the same thing in um, with smooth and transparent ink. So uh, again, some of these different ones you can play around with. So like this one, multiply. You know, you can see like if I'm doing scribbles, it kind of smooths it out, and so forth. So I guess the moral of the story of this is just play around with stuff. But I wanted to show you some of these different ones. So let me show you. Um, so custom brush, fantastic to get things like if you're trying to do, um, uh, landscapes and that kind of stuff, but let's talk about stencils for a second. Okay. So I want to come back to this and making some stencils, for example, if you're trying to make some trees, ducks, whatever, I just basically, I drew these out. I went around it, shaped it up how I liked it and then got it how I wanted. You can import, uh, pictures like I found a Creative Commons of the Moon and imported it just because I wanted to have a quick stencil. I don't tend to, I don't use this one, but uh, I just wanted to have a quick stencil of the moon to try and play around with it. But uh, I do make a lot of uh, my own stencils here and there, like for example, this dead pine. Okay. Now, in order to make this, all I did was I took the ink brush, I put it on black, and then I just started kind of uh, was looking at some trees and then I said, okay, so let me get, if I want to have this kind of a old gnarly tree, okay. But I don't want to have to constantly redraw a tree and keep redrawing a tree over and over. Instead, what I can do is I can get one that I like, like so. Um, and then once I have it, that's actually a very ugly tree, but anyway, <laughs> I can come over to uh, my layers here. I can click new stencil from layer contents, just like that. 
now I have a stencil. Now, if I want to save this, I just right click on it and then add it to a collection, any of those collections I have. Um, and that's how I built up my stencil library. So it's a fantastic and easy way to do it. You can import pictures, like I said, if they're black and white, and it'll, the black stuff becomes the stencil part that's cut out and the white is there. It also, if you import anything, it needs to be, uh, this layer, if you look here, you can tell it's transparent. So it kind of does it like a PNG file. Anything you import would have to be a transparent background. Otherwise it's just gonna do the whole box. So, um, so that's how you want to do it. But here's why I do this. So let's say, for example, I'm like, yeah, okay, I kind of like that, but maybe I want to uh, change it a little bit. So if I hold control, that does scale. As I go right, left, right's bigger, left, smaller. Um, maybe I want to turn it. So alt allows me to spin it on the axis of this pin. So that's where it thinks it's pinned down. So I can move that pin. And then if I do alt, see, it spins it around that pin. Okay. So maybe I want to change the dimensions of it. So I hold shift and control. And if I go left, it squishes it down. If I go right, it stretches it up. I can then move it. I can then twist it. And then I can um, play around with it. So why do I do that? Why is that important? Well, because that's how I can use the same stencil over and over and get a multitude of trees done quickly by layering my stencils. And it gives me the ability to quickly throw in a background, quickly throw in some trees um, to be like, okay, I want to have this tree like so, you know, and so now I've got this really gnarly looking tree that I can play around with. And then if I wanted to, I could just turn that into a stencil and use that one again. And I don't have to save it. I could just keep using it over and over. And then if I don't want to see it right now, I just right click on it and click hide stencil. If I'm done with it, remove stencil. Uh, if it's saved in my stencils folder, then it would just save it there and I can pull it back up. So stencils are your friend. Use them a lot. You know, uh, if you get one that you drew out and you really liked it, you know, like that duck I did, I just spent some time drawing a duck and then I turned it into a stencil, you know, so uh, it's, it's just a really cool thing to mess around with and do. So definitely use stencils. But as far as for rocks and stuff, uh, what I did there, and if you've seen my other video, you've seen where, oh, wait, this is still on eraser mode where I just take and layer out some different textures and you know kind of erase it maybe smudge it it's too much kind of get it, you know, just different shapes. Then I come to my selection tool here, which this is one that you want to go to settings because here you have all the different settings that you can use, like selecting and stuff. But let's go with this one. And this is kind of the straight. And so then I can just kind of keep playing around, maybe switch to eraser. I don't want an instant eraser. Needed. So I get that done, then I want to come back to hard freehand. Get that selected. Now I'm going to go to here, transform layer. 
So if I do this, it's just going to scale it up and down. But if I do this one, it's going to allow me to kind of stretch it a little bit. Okay, so then really play around with it. All right, so then I make a new stencil from layer. Okay, so let me just kind of let's do this and let's do paint roller. And I don't even know what preset it's on right now. It's not like it matters. That's just on thick, so we'll do thick and smooth. Let's do speckled. Okay. So we can even switch to the oil brush. I'm on the everlasting still. stencil over and I'm going to turn it come in with a little bit brighter color then I can go back to the oil brush like so turn it like so about the planes of this rock. Right click on it. Let's flip it horizontally. Let's go with kind of the standard bluish. A little bit darker. So do alt, select a color from there. Let's go with a little bit lighter color. Okay, we're gonna flip it back horizontally. Turn it. Get that laid out in here. And then just kind of take it here. And then we've got um, this done like so. So you can see it's really starting to build the layers of a rock. And then from there, because I've still got it selected, I can paint all around it. And then I can come in, throw in some different highlights, some different tones. I can come back just like that and that's how you can keep building it up and you can switch the oil brush to like the thick um, glossy and again switching over to a kind of a light color it'll interact with what's below it so depending if you're making a rock you're making a mountain or whatever you start getting some really cool textures and shapes and you just keep building it and play around. But anyway, the point here is, is that you can make a stencil like something like that just by playing around with shapes, stretching it, turn it, and then save it. And then you've got a, um, so I'm going to add it to collection, nature, uh, title it. Now I've got it saved. And then once I come in and I can deselect this, I can go in and start playing around with, you know, the uh, shadows of it and stuff like that. So this is just me using my mouse. That's why it looks so crappy. <laughs> but anyway, um, but that's just a real quick, easy way 
to start building up textures, to, to make stencils, to play around with the custom brush, and all that. So I can go more into this, but these are some of the questions that people have been asking in our Facebook group, so I wanted to answer those. So if you have questions, join the Facebook group, come over, and uh, we can go over some of that stuff. But hopefully this gives you an idea of how to play around with some of these things, how to um, use some of these things to start messing around with. And I'll go over and make some new tutorials on clouds and, and that kind of stuff shortly on using those. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. If you got a question, leave it below and in the comments and we'll go from there. So thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and let me know how else I can help.